about a week to, you know, kind of decide because it was earlier than I expected to come back. I was hoping to come back in like say July, but uh, uh, the, you know, seeing how I was feeling uh, when when the when uh, the question was asked for the fight, um, I was feeling really good as far as my healing goes, my nose. So I uh, I felt confident with it, so I took the fight. And how's that nation? Like, obviously, it was great when you were saying quite a few times in training after, yeah. after the last fight, especially with like Stephen Thompson. How's yeah. that now? Is, is that how, how much would you say it is uh, as a percentage out of 100? Yeah, I would say it's uh, it's 100. percent You know, I really gave it the time it needed to heal, like any bone would. You know. I don't have any breathing problems. It's, uh, it was just a matter of time for the bone to actually heal. And uh, this year I gave it that time. The year before I didn't. The, the fight's gonna be in May. Is that the idea that you thought uh, you know, it would be to get your return and your first time left? Yeah, yeah, like I was saying, it took me uh, about a week to, you know, to sit on it and think, you know, is, is this really what I wanna do? Because I was planning a, a, a later return to fighting, but you know, I'm, I'm feeling good and I'm ready to go. What about Paul? Is he a guy that you ever thought you would get in a, in a case with? Yeah, absolutely. I've been watching Paul for many years now. And, you know, same weight class kind of thing. So I figured definitely we'd be meeting sooner or later. And is it this one? Are you going to be looking for the title after this if you beat Paul? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, this is a title contender fight. Have you enjoyed the level of Rory or are you itching to get back in there? It's been quite a while. Yeah, I've been pretty miserable with it to be honest. Uh, it was a hard, it was a hard couple of years actually, because uh, I had taken some time off uh, after the Lawler fight, and uh, you know I damaged it in training. I took a fight, you know, trying to get back in there, and uh, got hurt again. So you now this year I had to take actual time off, even from training. So it was a bit miserable for me. It, this is a huge fight for you. After, of course, the loss against Robbie, and then again Stephen Thompson, two of the best welterweights UFC has to offer. You're now coming into the fight, Paul Daly, who a lot of people would consider the most dangerous welterweight that Bellator have. Was that even a consideration for you, or did you want to straight away take on the best when you were fit and ready to do so? Yeah, you know, my plan here in Bellator is to fight the very best. Uh, and I told Bellator, you know, any weight class, you know, it really doesn't matter to me. Obviously, right now I'm, I'm gunning for the welterweight title, uh, possibly the middleweight title, and after that, it's really about the biggest names and the most exciting fights. Do you feel any pressure um, coming into it, Rory? With the, the free agent market, is it's all talked about fighters are moving, but you are probably the biggest name to test the free market and move to Bellator. Does that add more pressure? Do you feel coming into this fight? Uh, not for me. I mean. Uh, it was just a financial situ uh, decision on my part, you know. It's up to other fighters, you know, if they're happy with what they're fighting for, and go ahead and re-sign whatever they got. But, um, you know, I, I uh, for me, I, I believe in uh, fighting for what I'm worth, you know. And it, when it comes to contract negotiation, I was willing to uh, to go into a battle for it. And it worked out in my favor. And, uh, and also, I'd like to add that I'm really happy with where Bellator is going, you know. They, uh, they're, they're here building a, a strong roster. You know, they're not uh, they're not just uh, some some sparkle uh, that's gonna just uh, flicker away like a lot of other MMA shows. They got a good they got a good team of guys like Scott Coker and Rich. They know how to make a good successful show. Um, Scott Coker, when he was in Dublin last, said that the welterweight division he considers Bellator the best welterweight division. Would you echo them words? Um, I wouldn't. I mean. It's it's com we're competing we're getting up there but I, I still believe UFC's got the deepest the deepest roster I think there's still a lot of work to be done for Bellator but uh, I think uh, I think uh, me moving over I think it's, it's there's going to be some guys from UFC looking at that and uh, seeing how happy I am over here and uh, I think they're gonna they're gonna see uh, that they want to make the transition too or at least test their free agency to see if they can get what they're worth. Uh, I, I see Bellator coming out on top on this. How big was the UFC Reebok deal in your decision to come to Bellator? Or was it purely that the UFC weren't offering you a deal on the contract that you thought you were worth? Yeah, I mean, Reebok, I the know. biggest thing was Bellator stepped up and, and, and uh, they gave me a great offer. And uh, you know, I, I think that's, that's what really resonated with me on this. Obviously, there's a few other things like the sponsorships and things like that, 
but and also the opportunities Bellator, Bellator is willing to give me. They want to put me in the big fights. They want to market me and put me into these these uh, these fights that are going to be exciting for the fans. UFC, you know, they've got tons of other guys that they've got to manage, and you know, sometimes they could forget about uh, other talents and, and forget about guys. And maybe I, and I was thinking maybe I was going to be uh, one of those guys that was going to fall off their radar, you know. Your longtime teammate George Saint Pierre is making a comeback. Would that be something that you would have discussed with George? Because Saint Pierre being negotiation was holding up his return. Did you have a word with him and say Bellator? Uh, I didn't have any part of that. Uh, we we have the same management team, so I'm sure they did. But uh, no, I didn't have anything to do with that. The London crowd can sometimes attract some more lighter uh, MMA consumers. What what can you? You know, a bit more casual fans may turn up to the fight in London. Okay. What what type of fight and what type of uh, performance can they expect from you on May? Uh, they can expect me to move forward in this fight. You know, I'm going to be hunting them down. Like I was saying at the press conference earlier this week in London, is I'm going to be coming forward every time he takes a step back, every time he wants to take a breath. I'm going to be in there in his face pressing him, not giving him a chance to breathe until he feels like he's drowning and he's going to have to give up. Are you at all worried about Paul's power? Because Michael Venepage News here earlier said that uh, Semtex has rockets in both hands, or do you think you have both the striking and the grappling advantage over him and you can neutralize his threat? Uh, I mean, I'd be stupid enough to say that he doesn't have power. I mean, look at the guy's fights, but I mean, I fought, I fought some of the, the hardest hitters in the, the division, and uh, I don't think uh, my power is uh, anything to to blink on either you know so we'll see what happens but uh, you know he's definitely got some some hard punches and kicks and got some amazing striking those are his, his assets but uh, I just feel that I have a wider range of abilities and I'll be able to neutralize that. One thing Paul did say when he was here with us was yeah he's watched your fights but you don't have that knockout power so what do you think of that? What, what would your reply to that comment be? I got quite a few knockouts so I just think it's just factually wrong. <laughs> One or two more guys. Would you like? Is, is there a way that you think this fight is going to go, or do you yeah. think it's going to go the distance? Do you think you'll finish Paul? I'm looking to finish him. I'm looking for a dominant fight. You know, I want to push this fight. You know, I want to make him bleed and hurt him. Does that does that put more pressure on you to get the finish though? Because you look at people like Ben Henderson, and some of the other guys who've came out from the UFC haven't had as much success as they probably expected to have. You feel that puts a bit of pressure on you as well to go in there and get the finish? I'm not looking to put pressure on myself. More, let the pressure off. Uh, I think you've seen in my last fight there. Uh, it was a pretty pretty hesitant fight, trying to be something I wasn't, trying to match skills to a guy that was not my style. So I think just taking that pressure off and being free out there, uh, being myself, um, fighting my fight, I think it's just going to go that way. And uh, I'm a finisher at heart, so I think it'll just come out that way. Is there any reason you approached that Wonder Boy fight differently? Was it just game planning or was it any reason? It was, you know, at the beginning, uh, you know, I had, I had a good attitude, but I think it was just a, a you know, one little idea turned into... The whole, the whole camp just going that, that direction with worrying about his his skills, you know. Just one little, you know, seed of doubt kind of clouded the whole training camp and me working on just what Steven does, you know, rather than just doing my thing and what I'm used to training for. So, you know, it turned out to be a really terrible fight for me, but in the end I, I sat down and I was honest with myself. What did I do wrong here and how can I not do that and be in that situation ever again. GSP said you were destined to be a world champion. When do you think we'll see that come true? Uh, any day now. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.